we definitely decided that we should include the data that we had on our biodiversity. So I will present for you the elaboration of a data set to centralize the chemical composition data for the promotion of nutrient-rich foods in Brazil. And this work was part of my PhD work at the University of, of Sao Paulo. So when we look at Brazil, we can see that occupies about half of the South American continent with a remarkable climate diversity, which makes of Brazil uh, a country with six different biomes and a country with the largest biodiversity in the world. And as we have uh, discussed it a lot uh, yesterday, the production and consumption of nutrient-dense foods can help to improve food safety and the food biodiversity provides a natural richness of nutrients that can contribute to the diverse and healthy diets. So including more compositional data on biodiverse foods into the national food composition table can help to promote their consumption. So to elaborate this data set, we started with a database that was including data for 3,300 3, food entries. And these data were compiled of the, over the past few years for the Brazilian food composition table, including analytical data of foods that were produced or commercialized and consumed in Brazil mainly compiled from scientific literature, but also from uh, in-house data from several laboratories. So to make this uh, data set, we had to go through each of the 3,300 foods and make this question. If the food entry is counting for the nutritional indicators for biodiversity, so if it was not counting, we did not include the data. So in a very summarized way, we included foods with detailed description below species level, including identification at variety, cultivar or breed. We also include wild and underutilized foods. So out of this 3,300 food entries, we could identify that 32% uh, were accounting for at least one of these indicators, resulting in a data set worth 1,271 foods. And when we look only at, at this data set, we can see that the data represents mainly the composition for plant, food, plant foods, so 55% of the foods were fruits and 23% vegetables. And when we divide it according to the indicators, 46% of the foods included in this data set were below species level and for 46 below species level and 42 were underutilized. So I will give some examples of plenty of plant foods in, in these two categories. So here we'll have some examples of foods included in the data set to show the range on the content of some nutrients in commonly consumed foods in Brazil, but uh, from different varieties or cultivars. So here we have so here we'll have uh, foods that are widely consumed in the country, and we have data for calcium, vitamin A, and ascorbic acid. We have the minimum value that we found in our data set and the maximum value. So if we take sweet potato as an example, we can see that the vitamin A content per 100 grams uh, shows a, a wide range, so we can have varieties with no vitamin A and we can have varieties with more than 3,600 micrograms. And if we, if we consider that the, serving, the average serving size consumed for this food is 207 grams, if we consume this, um, this serving, we can have 12 times the dietary reference intake in one day, consuming only one serving. So it's zero against 12 times the, the DRA. So when we look at the different varieties of mango, 
Even though mango is considered a good source of vitamin A, big acid content, we also have a big range, so from 31 to 100. 112 and it represents almost 100 percent to 345 percent of the DRE per per serving. So we can see that uh, even thinking about the foods that are commonly consumed, we can have a big change on the nutrient content depending on the cultivar or variety. Now I will give some examples uh, showing the content of commonly common commonly consumed foods in Brazil against underutilized foods. So here we have the ascorbic acid content for some fruits. So among the most consumed fruits, we have banana, orange, and papaya. And here we have some examples of underutilized fruits. So we can see that we have similar and much higher content in many, many of these fruits. So even if we take as a reference the orange, which is normally promoted as a good source of ascorbic acid, we can see that acerola and camu camu, they have 18 times or 29 times the content of orange. Here we have the vitamin A content, so we have the same uh, consumed foods here against the underutilized ones. So we have for pitanga we have uh, similar content than what we find in papaya. But when we look at acerola, tucumã, and butia, we have values that are much higher. So four times for acerola, 15 times for tucumã, and 19 times for butia. Now when we look at the green leaf vegetables, so here we have lettuce, cabbage, and kale that are the most consumed. And here we have the underutilized ones. So we can see that we have similar and much higher content in some cases. So looking at taioba, we have twice the, the amount that we can find in kale. And here we have the calcium content. So Again, much higher values in the underutilized green leaf vegetables. And here I would like just to make a, a comment that it's important to note that all the values that I presented here, they correspond to the raw food and the foods. Um, and we did not take into account the bioavailability, so as we discussed in some sessions yesterday. And as conclusions, we have that there are great differences on the content of some nutrients, not only among different varieties of fruits and vegetables, but also when comparing underutilized plant foods to the ones that are commonly consumed in the country. And this data set provides evidence to identify nutrient-rich foods for inclusion in national programs and policies in nutrition and food security in Brazil. And to disseminate this uh, information, as I, I said at the beginning, we included all these values from this data set in the Brazilian food composition table, and everybody can access online. We have a section that is dedicated only to biodiversity and uh, regional foods. And thank you very much. Vitamin A, what is the conversion ratio you have used beta carotene to vitamin A conversion? Uh, in Brazil, we use retinol equivalents. So for, for beta carotene is one, one uh, it's divided by six, is one milligram divided by six. And for the other carotene is divided by 12 to calculate the total content. I think a uh, very good presentation. I just would like uh, to ask a very simple question. The vitamin C, which method do you use to you know, quantify the vitamin C? Uh, in the data that we have compiled here, I showed only it was only ascorbic acid, so it was not total vitamin C. 
and we have a mixture of um, colorimetric method and uh, HPLC. Okay. We use it both. We compile data on both. But sometimes, you know, we try to compare for between, for example, you see about, you know, how many times compared to orange, right? Because sometimes we have, we, we cannot compare, you know, based on the value. You have to look at also the method you use. If you are using the you know, titration method, might be you know, overestimate, you know, compared to the HPLC method. This one, we have to be careful when you're comparing, mm -hmm. you know, between one and two. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you.